Hello everyone. So we are back for part two of our lighting and faux crown molding in our theater. If you remember from our first video, we actually have kind of a blunt junction between our ceiling tile and our wall. So we thought after watching Toronto R's videos that, you know, let's go ahead and put up some faux crown molding and some lighting to give it more of a theater experience. So as you can see, um, as I mentioned, we have the junction between the ceiling tile and the walls. So what we did is we actually ordered some pre-cut corners from decorativeceilingtiles.net. As um, we showed in the last video with the unboxing, they came really nicely packaged and just basically ready to install. So what we had done is we went through and we measured how much we needed. So if you can see here, we actually took um, the blue chalk and we made a blue chalk line, which is just fun no matter how many times you do it. And we actually went all the way across. Now, when we were trying to figure out where to position the crown molding, well, first off, we needed to make sure that we had enough room to actually get our fingers in so we could put the lights in place. But we also kind of played around with it a little bit to see what fit our needs or what we thought looked best. So as you can see, we basically went all the way around with the blue chalk line. It just makes it a lot easier because this now we know where the bottom of our crown molding needs to go. So we don't have to worry about things being uneven. So we're going to take a look at how we started to put it up. So as we showed in our last unboxing video when we opened up these uh, faux crown molding, you can see that uh, this is a three and a half inch size crown molding. On the inside it has a pretty cool little feature that wood crown molding doesn't have. Is it already has a pre-made trough for your indirect lighting. So you don't have to make anything extra to make these work. So we decided inside the trough that we would put some aluminum foil tape, which we bought online. And it came like this. This is a 150 foot roll. We didn't need quite that much, but that's all it comes in. And it comes in like a 1.9 inch strip like this. And so we decided to line the inside of the trough, primarily for insulation reasons, but the, you know, it has the added benefit that it's also very reflective, which will be pretty useful in shining the uh, light on the ceiling. And so this is one piece of the crown molding where we've already put the foil on, and you can see it's just kind of lining the inside there, and that's where the... In that's where the rope lighting is going to sit. The crown molding we ended up find researching a little bit on how to stick it up and we ended up buying some liquid nails. This is the projects version from Home Depot. And you can kind of see it there and just comes out of a squeeze it out of a caulking gun onto the back of it and it's the nice thing about liquid nails is it's uh, pretty fast as far as how quickly everything sticks to the wall um, and so you just kind of press it up hold for a few seconds and the very lightweight crown molding sticks up pretty easily so I'll finish up this last little bit, the little remaining part that I haven't completed yet, just so you guys can see. And so this aluminum foil tape is sticky back, so you peel the, the back off. And as you can see, I'm using little strips of it in six inch pieces, because it's kind of hard to work with. And cutting a 96 inch piece, because that's the size that these uh, crown molding pieces come in, is a little cumbersome. So we decided to cut them into little smaller pieces because it's a, just a little bit more manageable. And you can see, you just kind of place it in there. And 
and it goes on pretty easily just like that. If you're a little bit more brave, you might want to try to use a whole one piece strip. So it'll save you some time, but in my experience, it was pretty hard to work with because it would just keep rolling over and sticking to itself. So you might need a couple of extra hands to help you do it. All right, so now that the aluminum tape portion is finished, now we're gonna go ahead and start putting the liquid nails on. As you can see, just putting on just a little bit in a kind of like a thin line going zigzagged a little bit because as my husband says if you do it neatly the first time you don't have to clean up afterwards so if you just go ahead and just put a little bit on that way you don't have to worry about it seeping out from the edges or anything like that and this liquid nails is actually pretty strong a little bit goes a long way with this so you just put on just a little bit, just enough to make sure that you can get some type of adhesion on the parts that actually stick out that will be touching the wall. Now, as you can see on this particular model, we actually just have the bottom portion and the top portion that will actually be touching. So we don't need to put any on the middle part. The liquid nails, it is great. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who do different types of home projects have used it, but for those of you who haven't, I mean, it's really not that expensive at all. It's probably like a little under $2 per tube, but it does work really well, so don't let the price fool you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this panel up. As you can see, the blue chalk line is gonna be what we're gonna use as our reference point. And I'm going to hope I'm tall enough for this. Alright, okay. So as you can see, that blue line is going to be our reference point right there. So this is where you definitely need to have at least two people to do this. So we're using that blue reference line and that's where we're going to stick it. And hope that it's even. And then make sure that you apply some pressure to both areas where you had actually applied the liquid nails. Hold it for a couple of seconds so that it doesn't rebound off. So as you can see, we use the blue chalk line for our reference point as to where to put it. Now, some areas you'll notice that the wall isn't exactly straight so it actually looks like the molding bows out a little bit and that's fine um we're actually going to be painting these later so we'll just fill that area with some caulking before we do any type of final painting so as you can see if we go across here um, we had some joints that we did right there which also before we do our final painting we'll probably go ahead and caulk over a little bit so that it's a nice smooth finish now in regards to the lights that we've picked we actually went through a couple of different types um, i'll let my husband comment on that in just a moment but as you can see we did take some led rope lights not even rope lights what are they called okay i guess led rope lights is what we're going to go with here and that's actually what we were applying on top of that aluminum tape the brand that we actually chose to go with was Olafus, I believe. Um, I can actually show you that box in just a moment. And they actually priced out to be a little less expensive than some of the other lights, but we actually tried them out and surprisingly, they actually worked the best. So we ended up returning two of the other brands that we had gotten and we ended up going with this. We'll show you what this looks like on in just a moment here. So here's the lights that I was mentioning. It's Olafus, O-L-A-F-U-S, and it's actually called a LED light strip, not rope light, so I apologize for that. Um, here's the box that it came in, packaged pretty nicely. It's the um, no winding of lights when lighting, which, that makes sense, okay. Anyway, um, so it came, comes almost like a movie film reel, so that was kind of cool, um, kind of neat retro type if you would. Uh, this is just 
the model number, the features of it, life expectancy is 50,000 hours, which is nice. And that's not English over there. So we're going to come back over here and um, I'll show you a little bit more. So we actually waited a couple of minutes in order for the liquid nails to set because we found that if we go ahead and apply the lights at right afterwards, then it actually kind of weighs it down and it tends to move a little bit. So it's been maybe about five minutes and we're ready to go ahead and apply the lights. So here's the strip of lights and you can kind of see it's pretty simple. They make other ones that have like a plastic coating out of, on top of them that are usually used for outdoor applications because it, the, the plastic strip makes them uh, waterproof. But uh, we decided to go with the one without the plastic strip because the plastic strip ones are pretty bulky. And uh, I read online that over time that plastic strip starts to yellow. And so it gives the LED lights a little bit of a yellowish tint to them. Plus we're indoors and if we need something that's waterproof indoors we have bigger problems. So you can see this is what the LEDs look like and on the back side is a sticky adhesive and you just peel the tape back and it sticks just like this. So you can see here I'm peeling it off a little bit I'm just trying to make sure that it doesn't stick into the wrong places and you can just see I'm kind of pushing it down into that trough that, that we had in the middle of the crown molding. One other thing to note is in corners like this, these light strips aren't meant to bend 90 degrees. So you usually have to bend a little bit of a loop, kind of like that, so that when one side like this is coming across and you go to the other side, you, you don't put a bend in the light and cause them to not work anymore, basically. Um, that wouldn't be good. Yeah, and as far as these lights go, we did quite a bit of research before choosing and deciding on these lights. We tried a lot of the name brand lights, like the Philips Hue um, and a few of the other ones out there. And we decided to go with these, mainly because our room measures about 40 feet across along the walls and to find a light strip that can be connected in series for 40 feet is actually pretty difficult. Um, for example, the, the Philips Hue has a limit of 32 feet um, and some of the other brands, you can try to connect them for more than 32 feet, but after a while the light starts to dim because the power supply isn't adequate. So what we ended up deciding to do is we bought two 30 foot strips of this particular brand um, which you just saw earlier. Olifus. Olifus. Um, and just kind of have them meet in the middle and they'll be connected by two separate power sources. Um, that way the light output is going to be a little bit more even and we get to have our room covered uh, for the entire 40 feet. These do have little markings here. You can see right there where you can actually cut these to shorten them if you have too much or if you have a room that, that doesn't need quite as many feet as uh, these strips come in standard. So that's, that's kind of how they go. And this one, when we actually tried it in at the location that it is now, it actually showed more of a true color that we were looking for. Um, one of the other brands, what was it? Start with a G. A, a Genie brand. Yeah. That one we noticed that when we put it in at the height that we wanted it, it wasn't as bright as we were hoping it would be. So this one we were actually really happy with. And once we get a little bit further down here, we'll go ahead and we'll show you what the, uh, what the lights look like when they're on and the different options that are available. One moment. So now that we have the lights installed for the portion that we're gonna show you for today, um, just thought I'd show you the little remote that it comes with. It's actually quite cute, the Olifus light. Um, it comes with a CR2032 button battery. It's pre-installed. You just have to remove the little plastic strip in order to get it to work. Um, this also will work with your Alexa. 
um, if you want, or your smartphone, if you want to go ahead and set that up to change the lights. As you can see, there's about 12 different colors that you can pick from. Our color of choice was actually blue. Even that, you can see that there are three different shades of blue. So what we'll do is um, I'll go ahead and I'll turn it on so you can see what it looks like with the lights on. And so there's our red. Oh, that's actually a yellow color. Green, there's one shade of blue. There's a royal blue, which is probably the one that we're gonna go with, like a magenta type color. And there's your white. So now I'll go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like with the lights off. All right, so with the lights off, there you go. You can see the different colors that show up. Um, this is actually on automatic mode, so it's just gonna kinda go through the colors without me having to choose it. But another cool feature that this has is it has different modes to where it will actually go along with the music of the movie or whatnot that you're watching. There's like a strobe mode, um, like a beat mode that'll actually go with the beats. And I mean, it's just, it has a lot of cool little features that we actually notice that the higher brands did not have. So this is kind of what we're doing. As you can see, we're only about halfway through. So when we're done, then we'll go ahead and we'll post our final. Well, actually it won't be our final because we still need to do the painting as well. So maybe if we get a chance, we'll go ahead and do another video with all the lights up, but make sure that you go ahead and hit subscribe so that you're aware when we do post the next video, but hopefully we'll get that out soon because I know we're really excited to kind of get this finished and see how it goes along with the movie. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know what your questions are. And we'll definitely try to um, let you know what has and what has not worked for us, along with different types of brands and things that we tried out. So just let us know if you have any questions, and we'll check back in with you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.